To get into our Cisco Unity Connection voicemail system, it's very similar in look and feel to Communications Manager. And again, we'll kind of take it back to brand new install. When you installed it, it asked you to set up an administrative account. So remember what that username and password is. And then going forward, we will we'll be using that account to gain access. So here is my starting point that I want to share with you. I'm typing in my IP address of my Unity server, and it brings me to my license manager or going into Unity Connection. I could have gone straight into Unity Connection by typing the IP address and then CU for Cisco Unity admin. That would have done it too. So now let's go ahead and type my username and password to gain access to my Unity Connection system. And the layout, the color scheme is the same. The layout of the menus is a little different. And you'll notice it's telling me I didn't back things up. <laughs> well, this is a lab, so I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. But all of my administrative duties are all on the left-hand side of the screen. Now, this, could, this can all be shrunk down into a very tight, tiny menu option. So you can kind of see all the headings as I kind of go through here and, and shrink it down. Um, I usually like to leave it expanded because I want to see where everything is, is located. But you can shrink it down, and when you first come in here, you can just have this nice, tight, clean little interface and say, oh, uh, I think I want to go into my users and, and import users or something. But the, the point is, getting here, you use your IP address of your Unity Connection server. Whether you type CU admin or you came in the way I did, where you just have an extra click to get into the main administration page, enter your username and password, and that gets you there. So that's really what the point is of coming into your Unity Connection server and your Communications Manager server is to get that graphical user interface up and running so that you can start administrating it. If you're familiar with the Call Manager interface, we have different menu options we get into, the admin, the OS, the serviceability. Well, the same rules apply for Unity. And I like that it's kind of laid out the same. So let's go ahead and take a look at that serviceability screen. Notice I got there. Here's my drop-down menu. I went into Cisco Unified Serviceability. And I just like Communications Manager. If you covered up that it was Unity, you wouldn't realize that it was Unity. You'd think it was the call manager or vice versa. You have alarms, you have traces, but tools is where we want to focus for now. And service activation, just like we had on the phone system side. You can select which server you want to look at. So I'll just say go here just to refresh it. And you can see some of the services. Now, I haven't set up a lot of services on my voicemail system just yet, but I could check all these services and start them if I so chose. We can also go into feature services versus network services. You can see my reporting and my DirSync are running right now. We also have the feature, or sorry, the network services that we could take a look at. And behind the scenes, some of these are going to be running because Tomcat, the web page, it has to be running. So it's up and running. My auditing, my uh, RTMT tool access, my DB replicator, you know, all of these are running behind the scenes. So while it didn't look like I had a lot of services going, I really do. I do on, on this particular server. So here are the running apps. I can do the same thing like the communications manager, select it, restart it. If I suspect there's something wrong, I don't have to reboot my entire voicemail system. To be honest with you, rebooting the voicemail system is much more painful than rebooting the phone system. It takes a lot longer for that thing to properly shut down because there's a lot more going on where we're storing messages and, and so forth and message waiting indicators and all kinds of different call state information. It takes longer, trust me. Sometimes it can be hours to properly shut down a voicemail system. We don't want to do that. So we want to be able to restart something and try that first. And that's what you have. The ability to come in here and, you know, the connection administration, stop and start it. The DB event publisher, stop and start it. And just get that up and running. 
hopefully by just doing a simple restart or refresh of that service.